In the middle of a blinding fast 35 minute rebuild, the drive team moves in to attack the clutch, the true source of a dragster's speed. After removing the clutch bell housing, the titanium canister that encloses the clutch system, the unit is quickly carried out of view. In a sport of secrecy, there's nothing more secret or sacred than a team's clutch setup. The slightest adjustment is often attributed to winning or losing. All the cars run kind of different clutch setups and there's a lot of different timers and heights you can run those levers at. It's kind of a secret from team to team. There have been very few cameras that have seen the inside of our clutch and the ones that have, we weren't very happy about it. With 8,000 horsepower pressing the driver into the roll cage with close to six Gs, it would be nearly impossible to change gears. So top fuel dragsters employ a centrifugal clutch which gradually engages the rear axle to transfer power from the engine through the tires and onto the track. There is no shifting. It's a high gear only car. All I do is hit the gas and everything happens from there. If too much power is transferred to the tires when the start light turns green, the car's wheels will spin in place. A disastrous time wasting error that means near certain defeat. So what you want is a lot of motor, RPM, and the clutch to kind of grab a hold of it at about 3.2 3 seconds in your run, where it finally goes to one to one and you're applying all that power to the ground. Only a few guys really know how to do that really well here. And my guy Mike Knudsen here that works on this Fram Top Fuel car, he's a scientist at it. Oh, secrets. Inside the bell housing, four or more clutch plates are attached to the driveline. They're stacked like pancakes between five or more hardened steel floaters attached to the engine flywheel. At idle, the clutch is completely disengaged, allowing the flywheel to rotate freely. When the driver hits the gas, the engine spins the flywheel at incredible speed, creating huge centrifugal force. The faster the flywheel spins, the more centrifugal force compresses the stack of floaters and clutch plates. The floaters dig into the clutch plates, gradually transferring power from the engine to the driveline. The more engine speed, the more the floaters grab the clutch plates. The more the clutch plates are engaged, the greater the wheel rotation speed. To prevent the clutch from engaging too quickly and spinning the tires, it's time to engage gradually. A circle of finger-like metal levers opposite the flywheel are swung outward by the spinning motion. As each lever extends, it compresses the clutch stack gradually to the point where the flywheel and the drive line lock up, applying the full rotational power of the engine directly to the wheels. As it goes in, you can hear this car, it almost sounds like it's shifting, but it's not. It's just basically pushing pressure against the clutch and trying to make it go one to one. We apply uh, different amounts of plate load from the head of the throttle to all the way throughout the end of the track, and we're just trying to basically get to the finish line with the most amount of traction, and that's the secret to the clutch. When the driver first guns the throttle, a device known as a throwout bearing keeps the fingers from extending too soon. At this point, the clutch is essentially slipping, allowing the wheels to start turning without losing their grip. At stage two, acceleration continues to climb as the clutch timer brings more clutch fingers into play. We're slipping it, we're slipping it, we're slipping it, then it finally goes one to one, and it almost feels like it shifts again. About three seconds into the race, the clutch has completely engaged. All 8,000 horsepower is being driven straight to the tires. At this point, the car is braking 300 miles per hour. You can feel that car take off through the middle of the track and towards the end of that thousand foot, it starts charging. Distributing power to the tires is the rear end. Its job is to keep both tires going at the same speed, fast. As Justin turns the gears, Mike inspects them carefully. It's imperative the gears run smoothly. At 8,000 RPM, any grinding in the rear end could cause a serious problem on the track. To ensure fluid operation, the men pour in an oil graphite mixture, used commonly for less aggressive mechanisms. Graphite by itself can actually cause clogging. 
Mixed in small amounts with oil, it becomes a powerful lubricant able to endure heavy abuse. Keeps the gears happy. 